All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be doing the tier list of every derivative and every derivative rule in calculus AB. Now, this is something my friends have wanted me to do for a week now since we just finished this unit of learning all the derivative concepts and rules. Now, I'm just gonna preface this video by saying that if you aren't a real mathematician and decide to take baby mode math, this video make literally no sense to you. Now, if you guys aren't in AP Calc or don't know what a derivative is, basically, a derivative is a function that models the slope or rate of change of its parent functions. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start off, so I'm gonna do these in order of which I learned them. So we're gonna do, Def of derivative first. Now, definition of derivative is the limit is h equals zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now, this is useful, but real mathematicians use the shortcuts, and this is for people who don't know the shortcuts. So, this is an f tier. Now, same for derivative point. This is useless if because the shortcuts make it invalid as well. These two are basically made pointless by all of this. All right, next up is power rule. Power rule is the shortcut. You basically multiply the coefficient of a term by its exponent and subtract one from the exponent and you get the derivative. This is such an easy one. This basically makes every problem in this super easy and basically saves you so much time. It basically makes these two invalid. That's why it's S tier. All right, next up is product rule. Product rule, I give this one an A. This is basically where you, if you have two functions being multiplied by each other, you can multiply the first term by the derivative of the second term and then add the second term times the derivative of the first. And that's really easy. It's very simple. It doesn't take a lot of memorization and it is pretty important. All right, next one we have is quotient rule. A uh, quotient rule, I give this one a C. I give this one a D. I don't like quotient rule. It's extremely annoying and looks messy. All right, next is sine of x. Sine of x is just cos of x. I give this one a B. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Sam goes with cos of x. Cos of x goes behind sine of x because it's negative, because it's just negative sine of x. All right, tan of x. Tan of x is secant squared of x. I, I give this one a C. This one is pretty easy, and you can use quotient rule to find it. All right, and same goes for cotangent. Cotangent is just negative cosecant squared of x, and it's just, it's pretty similar. It's cosecant is secant. I give these two C Bs as well. These two are um, themselves times... Um, this, for this one's tangent of x, and this one's a negative cotangent of x. So those are the rivers of those. These are really simple as well. All right, so next up is chain rule. And if you're wondering where these two came from, I forgot they existed, so I just put them there. Okay, so chain rule is basically you multiply, the, like the derivatives, the outside function times the inside function, so on and so on, and you multiply their derivatives together and you get the derivative. It makes problems so much easier, and it basically is crucial to almost every single derivative rule in here. So that's why it's an S tier. It is actually better than power rule. And that's saying a lot. All right, next up is implicit differentiation. Now, implicit differentiation is used when there's an x and a y. When you have a derivative with a term of y, you have to multiply the derivative by dy dx and solve for that. And I would like, I would put this in the b tier, but I'm putting it in the c tier because if you do the second derivative, you have to put do a ton of substitution and that becomes a complete nightmare. And you even have to plug in the original derivative into the second derivative. But now we have the inverse trig functions. I'm gonna group these together going horizontal because they are basically the same if one is positive and one is negative. So, so let's start off with sine and cos of x. These are one over the square root of one minus x squared. Cos is um, the negative one. I give these a C tier as well. They're some of the easier inverse trig ones, but I do not like how it says one minus x squared because that just makes my OCD mad. Next up is tangent and cotangent. Uh, these get a B tier. I am just going to say that these are the easiest ones. They're very straightforward. No, actually, I'm gonna put these in A tier. They're very, they're very straightforward and look good when you solve them. I'm also gonna put sine of x in A tier. I'm gonna move this one because this one's very easy. And same with cos. I like these. These are going in A tier. I'm actually going to move quotient rule in E tier. All right, next we have inverse cosecant and inverse secant. Now, I think these are in D tier because they are, they look good, but the fact that there's absolute value bars makes it a nightmare to simplify. Next up is E to the X. E to the X is just itself. Now, I would put this in the A tier because it's extremely easy, but I was browsing the hilarious subreddit r slash math memes, and I saw the worst video ever, which killed my love for this derivative. What will you have after 500 years? Are you that? I still have you. <laughs> so yeah, because that video uh, was just the worst joke I have ever heard in my life, it does go in the E tier, but it is above quotient rule. A to the X is just 
um, itself times ln of a. I put this one in B tier. It's not that difficult, but ln of a is just annoying. All right, uh, ln of x, this one is also an A tier. This one's just one over x. Log base A of x, right? This is ln of x, but you have to multiply the denominator by uh, ln of a. I put this one in C tier because it's just extremely messy if you have like a uh, binomial and the x argument. And finally, we have log, log, logarithmic differentiation. Now, a lot of people hate log, logarithmic differentiation. I keep messing up. But logarithmic differentiation is pretty useful if you have a really complex problem. This one is e way easier than implicit. Actually, I'm going to put implicit in here as well because implicit is actually super important later on in this section. Now, logarithmic is also very good for solving problems that uh, have an x, two x and two spots, like in the base and in the exponent. So yeah, guys. So the, yeah, guys. That is my power rankings for derivatives. If you guys are real, so if there are any real mathematicians watching this video and you don't agree with me, please leave your power ranking in the comments below or where you would move these. So you guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.